do this last section, I had schools of philosophy like idealism, realism, pragmatism, existentialism, and so on. And I had names of philosophers like Socrates, Plato, Immanuel Kant, Aristotle, and so on. That got me thinking and worried too. Does it mean that philosophy is just about Western philosophy? Does it mean that there has never been philosophy in Africa? If philosophy is deep thinking, deep reflection, profundity, then Africa has always been the home of philosophy. But Africans do their own philosophy differently. They tell stories, they use proverbs, they use witty saints and adage. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this through an indigenous African philosophy as we invite our guest storyteller to join us. representation of wisdom and tricks. One day, Tortoise said to himself, I'm going to collect the wisdom in this village and the adjoining cities. So Tortoise decided to go on a seven year long trip around the cities and villages surrounding his town to collect the wisdom about everything and anything. So, doctors went on a seven year research. So, you researchers are not the first to have started research. Doctors did the same. So, doctors went seven years of hard labor, collecting the wisdom from men, women, everywhere. After the end of the seventh year, doctors came back to his town. He was satisfied with, with himself, he was happy. He has a lot of collection. So when he came, he got a god. You know what a god is? I show you, it's a container used in the traditional system. So he put all the wisdom he gathered inside that god. On a very early morning, on the market day, he said, for the marketplace, there's a big tree, very tall Iroko tree, very tall palm tree, and other trees near the market. So the daughter chose the tall palm tree. And his decision was, he was going to take a rope, tie it on the neck of the god, put it on his tummy, and climb the tall palm tree, and tie the weasel on the apex of the tree. And the young men and women went to the farm and the brooks, saw him, Tortoise, what are you doing this early morning? He ignored them. He said, don't, don't worry, don't, we'll just go away. They were so arrogant about the knowledge they had acquired. So they left him. The tortoise was there, trying as much as possible to climb the palm tree with the god protruding in the, on, on his tummy, tied to his neck. He couldn't succeed. The tortoise started to sweat, he started to sweat through his shell. And here he was by the nightfall, when the same young men and women came back from their daily routine. And when they saw him, it was the young ladies who saw him and said, Tortoise, are you still here since morning? By that time, the tortoise was remorseful enough. He said, yes, I'm trying to climb this uh, palm tree and uh, take this gourd and tie it to the apex. The young ladies were perplexed. Is that why you have been struggling all day? You know you have flat tummy, short legs, and short arms. Put the God 
behind you and try again. So the tortoise listened to them. He put the god behind him, still tied to his neck, and he tried now to climb the palm tree. Voila! The tortoise succeeded. When he went halfway, he then thought to himself, I've spent the last seven years collecting the wisdom from all the villages and towns around us and the little wisdom to tie this wisdom on the apex of the tree has eluded me. He came back, he took the guard, went to the nearest uh, stone and smashed it on the ground. He then said, no one can be so wrong as the man who has all the knowledge. Now you see, in Africa, it is not Western philosophy or Western civilization that taught us how to respect our women or how to recognize that our women have knowledge. You can see that it took the young ladies to tell the tortoise the wisdom he needed. In Africa, engendering has always been with us. The ladies, the women are recognized as fountains of wisdom. The young is never ignored, while the old are also respected. So, you will now have some questions to reflect upon regarding these stories. How will you reflect on this in your teaching role as a facilitator, a teacher, a lecturer, when you are in the classroom? Then, what can you bring from your own indigenous space to illustrate knowledge in Africa? I will also tell you that it is not only true storytelling that Africans do philosophy. Africans also use proverbs, as I will show you shortly. Look at this. You also note that in Kiswahili, we talk about Ubuntu. Among the Yorubas, they talk about Omoluwabi. These are indigenous philosophies in Africa. Thank you.